In this video, we're going to begin modeling our coffee pot for masochists by Jacques Carolman from Donald Norman's book, The Psychology of Everyday Things. I'm going to go up to Create Curves CV Curve Tool. I'm going to start at the center of the grid, right at zero, zero, and just click around. And I'm just trying to build out the silhouette for one side. At this point, you don't have to be 100% accurate. You just kind of have to get uh, the basic form. But again, I'm only clicking uh, and building up one half of the coffee pot. And I started at zero, zero, and I'm gonna come in just a little bit for my wall thickness, and then I'm gonna go back down because the inside has an inner wall. So this is the inner wall I'm building now, coming down. Okay, so this will end right at the center line. I hit enter and we can see here in perspective this is the silhouette for the coffee pot. Then I want to go uh, up to uh, mesh and then surfaces and I'm going to do a revolve. I want to make sure that the settings revolve around the correct axes. I want it to revolve around the Y axis. I'm going to make it polygons. I'm going to change it to quads and count and I'm going to put my count at 500 and hit apply. Now you can see when I did that it revolved around the y-axis. All of my polygons are quads, they're four-sided. I can select the curve, and you notice that it selects my object pink. I can hit F8 in my keyboard and go into component mode and select the vertices of the curve. And I can select them and start to drag them out with the move tool. Go into uh, wireframe mode here. And now you can see I can just use that curve because there's still history on that curve and vertices of the curve I can drag out to continue shaping the teapot so at this point I'm not shaping the actual geometry itself I'm just going in and shaping out the curves to get a better form and you can see the inner wall and the outer wall I want to look here and make sure that the opening for the teapot has enough of an edge on it and is wide enough. So I'll bring it out just a little bit, making sure that my curve kind of stays even here. This one looks like it's a little bit pointed out, so I'm just going to bring it in and then grab the other vertice here and just kind of shape it. I don't want any vertices to kind of overlap another vertice. So a lot of it is just kind of pushing and pulling to get the right form and shape that you want of the initial geometry using the curve. So remember to look at it from all different angles. And I select that bottom the bottom two vertices and just bring them in. That doesn't close them, but if I snap it to the middle, uh, it will bring it right to the middle. But again, they're not closed. They're just brought to the middle. We'll close them later on. So this is a pretty good shape. So I'm going to go up to edit and just do a duplicate and hit W for move. Move the duplicate out of the way. I'll select this one and the curve and put it onto a new layer and then I'll put my duplicate one back at zero. This way I still have the curve to work with, but uh, I can mess with actual geometry now. It's also a good time to save your work. So I'll just grab some of these faces right towards the bottom here. And I'm gonna scale them in just a little bit. So we're gonna create the handle. Grab these two up here, scale them in a little bit. Select both of them by holding down shift and I'll do my edit mesh extrude, hit W, just bring them all out. Select the vertices, hit R, scale them in so it's nice and straight. I'm going to just rotate this one down, bring it in, rotate this one up, just kind of facing each other. Again, hold shift, select the faces. This time I'll go to edit mesh and over to bridge. The bridge will automatically set for five divisions by default. So I'm going to go into divisions, select the word divisions, 
and middle mouse button you can drag to change it. In this case, five divisions is all right, so I'm just gonna go in and grab the vertices, make sure you get all of them all the way around. In my side uh, view, I'm gonna position and shape the handle. So I'm trying to round it off a little bit. Take a look at it again from perspective view. I'm back into side view. Just grab the vertices I want. Rotate it around so it's straight. Just bring it in. So just evening the edges a little bit. Looking at the overall thickness of the handle. I hit three to look at it in smooth mode, turn wireframe on shaded off. So now you can see I've got a handle here. Just gonna go in and kind of adjust the shape a little bit more. This time by clicking and dragging to select multiple edges or edge loops using the vertices. So I didn't split too many uh, divisions into just about five divisions by default. If I had split too many divisions, this would be a little bit harder because I'd have to be careful exactly what I was selecting. Again, jump back into three mode, which is the smooth preview to see how it looks, and continue shaping. Grab some of these edge loops by double clicking them, and then I can position the entire loop. Go into face mode and select these two faces by holding shift. I'm going to extrude this out. Hit R to scale it so it's the faces are straight. Now let's rotate it up and extrude again. So I just hit G to extrude again rotating it, scale it in a little bit, bring it all the way up. Scale it so it's nice and straight on the top. Okay, I'm going to go up to Mesh Tools, use the Insert Edge Loop tool, and insert an edge across the spout here, and double-click it to select the entire loop. I can rotate it around, move it out to position it, then I'm going to use the Y key to add another edge loop in. So the Y key will get me back to the previous tool that I had and then just click for the edge loop, select the vertices, kind of shape it again. So the same kind of thing is you want to shape using the edge loops and the vertices. And you want to try and keep things even and just kind of inserting another loop down here to round it off. Pull these out a little bit, take a look at it in three mode. So this is what it looks like so far. So a little bit uh, kind of shaped there, but not the curve I'm kind of looking for. So I'll bring these vertices in, can grab the whole section of vertices and adjust it. Same thing here, maybe pull these out a little bit. I'm going to add another loop in here and pull that out. Grab the ones that go along vertically and then pull it so I can round that area. Same thing in the bottom, just kind of push it down a bit to round that off. And the same thing with the inside here, just kind of push it out to round it off a bit. Take a look at it in smooth preview mode and continue shaping. So Grab these vertices here and pull them, I'm trying to round it off a bit and maintain the shape. Jump back into smooth preview mode. So I'll jump back and forth very quickly to smooth preview mode, perspective mode, the side view to kind of get the shape adjusted the way I want. Take a look around. We'll go look at it in x-ray mode because we need to uh, adjust the inside as well and we need to create the opening. So I'm just going to select, so I'm going to grab these two here, hit delete so I can open it up. So you can see there, that's where the opening is going to be. And you can see that there's a thin wall in there, so we have to 
again come out and uh, build the inside wall in the spout itself. So I'm just going to select this whole spout and I'm going to go up to edit mesh and we're going to do duplicate and I'm going to select the duplicate and just move it off. I'm going to select the faces again and just hit delete. I'm going to zoom inside to this opening and select the vertices. I'm going to begin just shaping the vertices of the inner wall here up. Again, make sure you don't overlap vertices, so be very careful that you're not pushing them across another line here. I'm just kind of opening this up a little bit. Make sure you only get these vertices. Select these two faces, hit delete, and that way we can open up the second wall there. So the inner wall and the outer wall are both open. Now I'll take my spout here and I'll take these two faces at the top, delete those. I'm going to double click to select the edges around and I'll do an extrude and just push them in. Push it through here like this. Scale it in, scale it down. I'm going to hit G to extrude it again and just rotate it. I'm going to line it up with the outer edges of the wall. Hit G to extrude it again. Just position it, this extrude or this edge loop around. Again, hit G. Push this one around. So you can see I'm lining up the edge loops of the now inner wall with the edge loops of the outer wall. I'm going to take this one and bring it all the way through like so. Okay, go into object mode, position the spout back to the hole that we just created into the teapot. I'm going to grab this edge and just bring it in a bit. Make sure everything's lined up. Put it right back at zero. That lines it perfectly back up with the uh, vertices now from the separate piece of geometry that is the teapot. So I'm going to look at it in wireframe on shaded with x-ray mode. I'm going to go inside, grab the vertices, and I'm just going to hit the V key as I move. Hold the V key down to snap the vertices into place. Just lift this one up a bit. So I'm going to hold the V key down and snap into place to make sure everything lines up where it's supposed to. So let's make sure you grab the correct vertice, hold the V key, and snap it right into place. So the inner wall should snap into the inner wall. It's okay if you have intersecting geometry at this point. We'll, we'll again push it through. Just make sure that the correct vertice is snap. Grab our two pieces of geometry, and we'll do a mesh combine. That combines them together. We're going to go up to Display, Polygon Display, and Border Edges. This will show where we have our edges um, snapped but not merged. So now we have to merge the vertices together. So we're just going to do a merge and that will merge those vertices. So now that border edge line went away. So we can bring this down a bit. And then you can see here that it ended up moving that piece of geometry inside where it belongs. So I'm just grabbing the vertices I need. I can see right in here this point and this point did not merge together because I didn't snap them. So I'm just going to snap them holding the V key, select both of them, and we can do a merge to center this time because it's only two, one on top of each other. So they just merge right to each other instead of a merge. And again, just shape it. You can see we have still maintain our quad geometry, our four-sided geometry, and just shape this out. Go into wireframe mode so we can make sure we're not intersecting anything. I'm going to select this loop and do a merge. That way it just merges all of them very close with the threshold down in the option box. So it closes all of those vertices and attaches them. So now you can see that we have the inner spout. Next what we'll do is tighten our loops and do the cap to finish up.